Well, first of all, uh, in addition to giving them hell, let's give ourselves a round of applause because a lot of us have t sacrificed to be here today, and, and obviously everybody could think of something better to do, except yeah. nothing is more important. Nothing is more important than to be in this battle at this time. I was in Madison, Wisconsin last week, as were tens of thousands of other union members, as, of, as were tens of thousands of people not yet in unions, as were tens of thousands of people who don't even have jobs, as were many, many people, both from the public and the private sector. And all of us were there. All of us were there to draw a line in the sand. All of us were there to say, no, you are not going to take away our collective bargaining rights. Yeah. Unions are the collective voice of the workers, and collective bargaining is the way that voice gets heard. It's the only way that people have been able to move up in terms of wages and benefits. It's the only way that we've been able to get even a, a, a minimum level of respect on the job. It's the only way we've been able to get minimum guarantees on vacations, on hours of work, on health care and pensions. That's right. Collective bargaining is the means by which our parents and our grandparents those who did not get the pay, those who did not have job security, those people that they, our grandparents and our parents, only were able to get ahead, only were able to be lifted up and out of poverty because of unions and because of collective bargaining. <laughs> collective bargaining is the reason that the middle class exists today at all. And, and we are here to say that we will not let them gut we will not let them eviscerate, we will not let them eliminate, we will not let them cut back our right to collective bargaining. You may have heard at a couple of different demonstrations a chant, they say cut back, we say fight back. Well, the people on the other side, they, they're thinking about that too, but from the opposite perspective, of course. They say, well, we, we cut back already in the auto plants, and so then we're coming to the public sector, and we're telling the public sector people, well, we cut it back over there, so it's only fair that we cut back on you too. And then when they get away with it here, they're going to go back to the other uh, private sector people and everybody else and say, well, now it's only fair that we cut back you even more. We're saying today that that's wrong, and we're not going to put up with it. The billionaires and the multimillionaires that take home the fat paychecks, that have the fat pensions, that have health, health insurance and all the perks, they say that public employees shouldn't have those things. We say everybody should have the right to decent pay, a decent level of living, a decent pension. We're here today to express our solidarity with the workers in Wisconsin because we know deep in our bones that their struggle is our struggle. The governor of Wisconsin has tried to denigrate the protests in Wisconsin by saying, well, a lot of those people out there are outsiders. Well, isn't that exactly what every boss says every time you try to organize somewhere? It must be outside organizers. It can't be anybody on our company or our plantation with, that, that we want rights. Uh, so, they, they try to claim that these are all outsiders. You got a picture? But we've noticed that while Governor Walker talks against solidarity for the workers from other states, he has no problem in talking to, taking direction from, or taking money from the billionaire brothers from out of state. Yeah. Yeah. This claim that it somehow matters which side of the border you're on, on the Wisconsin side or the Illinois side of the border, is a false issue. It's a divide and conquer tactic. And from our point of view, there are no borders in the worker struggle. It doesn't matter what side of the border you're on, but where that border is, we're all together. We understand that if they get away with an attack in Wisconsin, that they're going to come after Ohio. If they get away with something in Ohio, they're going to Tennessee. If they get away with something in Tennessee, they're going to Oklahoma, which just passed uh, something out of committee last week, this week, on the same thing. And they're going to go to Missouri, and they're going to come to Illinois, and we're not going to let that happen. <laughs> Finally, let me say, why is it that they have targeted 175,000 uh, public employees in the state of Wisconsin? And particularly, why is it that the Chamber of Commerce and the Cook Brothers and all these billionaires 
billionaires in the private sector, why do they even care about public sector workers? It's because they've already decimated the private sector, and now the people with the greatest collective bargaining strength are in the public sector. We have the best contracts, the most people who are organized, and they think if they can rip the heart out of the labor movement where it's strongest, then we'll clear the way for them to do whatever they want to, whomever they want, whenever they want. And we're here to say that is not going to happen. The bill that they're pushing is almost a proclamation of a right-wing agenda. It's not even just on collective bargaining, though that's the core of it. It's also against democrat de democracy. They have something in that bill that says that they will no longer have public hearings and public votes on cutting Medicare, for example, and health care benefits in Badger Care. They want to be able to have the governor and a small committee that he, uh, that he holds make change the rules, cut off 50,000 people, senior citizens and others who benefit from that health care, and nobody can have a hearing, nobody can come to protest, nobody can come to testify. Another aspect in that bill, buried deep in it, is something about privatization. They want to be able to privatize, this is very specific in there, any public utility in, in, uh, Illinois, in Wisconsin. So if they have a state utility, say they have a state utility like CWLP, they want to be able to privatize it, but not just privatize it. They want to be able to do it without any bids. Just go ahead and give it to their friends. And that's, what that, that, that's the type of bill they're talking about. But the central feature of that bill is the elimination of collective bargaining. And we are here today, and we'll be here tomorrow, and we'll be here the next week to say this is not going to happen. If they get away with it, they want us to cut back here, cut back there, and that's people have been talking about a race to the bottom. What this really is is a push to the bottom. And I'm here to tell you that Aspen Council 31 will resist with all of our might. We're going to fight with all of our might to make sure it doesn't happen in Wisconsin, doesn't happen in the other states, and it's not going to happen here. Thank you.